Greetings to everyone out there in the YouTube multiverse. Rot here. Today's monster has been a part of Dungeons & Dragons for as long as I can remember. As one would expect, with a name like Carrion Crawler, they prefer to have a diet of death and rot. But, they have no bones about attacking the living either, no matter what it is. Have you ever attempted to find an injured or fallen comrade after a fight in the dusk hours? Just to find no trace of them ever being there. They might have been spirited away by a carrion crawler. Now don't forget to like and share our videos with your friends. And we're always looking forward to your comments. Now all of our resource material will be posted below with convenient links for you to drive through RPG. Now I thought I'd look at the life cycle of today's monster. Carrion crawlers out for themselves with absolutely no sense of community except during mating season of course. Now while other texts out there will state that the carrion crawler is asexual, meaning they're both male and female. Are these erythropods? will deposit a clutch of eggs, nearly a hundred leathery eggs at a time. Now some tomes out there state that the eggs are laid in a pile somewhere, just forgotten about in a corner, while others state that they are deposited in the body cavity of a fresh kill to keep them warm and start their incubation process. Now it is said that they immediately abandon their freshly laid spawn to fend for themselves. Now I'm going to give them the Thaco Factor Mother of the Year Award. Now carrion crawler eggs are about the size of a, a wine or water skin and they have very low survival rate. Uh, this is because they fall prey to whatever comes across them. Uh, it takes less than a week for them to emerge from their leathery egg sac to start their life as a pupa state. Now, Some legends have said that the pupa is what is referred to as the rock grub. And I can see why. But that's a subject for another video. Fresh out of their egg sac, the carrion crawler immediately will attack the first thing it sees for nourishment. This can be and will include other carrion crawler pupa. They attack with the ravenous fury of a tiger going after a wild boar. The carrion crawler pupa only stops eating when its insatiable hunger is satisfied for now. To say that being attacked by their siblings for food and surviving that isn't enough, carrion crawlers actually love the taste of their own young. What do you think of that? Uh, this is the reason why very few even survive to grow up into the adolescent stage. With proper food and resources at their disposal, carrion crawlers will shed their skin every month. Uh, this process of shedding will be an all-day process growing at the rate of six inches every time. Within a year, the carrion crawler will finally reach six feet in length. This is when they go on to their next stage of evolution as a young adult. After a week of reaching this stage, the carrion crawler will emerge from its pupa state, resembling something like a giant green cephalopod with eight tentacles, six pair of front legs, and six pair of back legs. Their tentacles act as the creature's uh, sensory of smell, taste, and maybe even hearing from what I've read, almost like that of a fly. They have two giant uh, multifaceted eyes mounted on their heads allowing them a very sharp sense of vision, even in the dark. Just like before, they will continue to molt their skin every month until they finally reach their adult stage. Now, 
they have a growth rate of 12 inches a month until they reach their maximum length of 9 feet. And a girth equal to 2 thirds its length. Now, at this point, their skin has changed from this sickly green color to a dingy yellow brown. In combat situations, a carrying crawler will crawl on walls and ceilings to get themselves into a more advantageous position where they can drop on top of their intended victims. Each of its eight tentacles is covered in a sticky secretion. Uh, this secretion acts as a, a paralytic on the exposed flesh of any creature that it comes in contact with, at which time the victim must perform a save versus poison saving throw or be paralyzed. Now the creature can repeat this saving throw at the end of each turn, ending this effect only on a successful save roll. If there's more than one combatant in the area, the carrying crawler will go from victim to victim to victim until every one of them has been paralyzed and put out of commission. I find this maneuver allows them the opportunity to grapple and consume their prey. To its own detriment, the carrion crawler will fight to the death, but it will only flee to get itself back into a more suitable position for combat. On the rare occasion you find carrion crawlers together, they don't work together, but work separately in battle. This is actually advantageous, as they're able to split up a party and paralyze everyone more quickly. Now for a bit of good news about these creatures. Luckily for everyone out there that makes a living exploring the dark recesses of caverns and the underdark, the life expectancy of the average carrying crawler is only two years after it reaches maturity. But, as you very well know, two years is plenty of time to run into one of these very dangerous creatures. You know they say you are what you eat. And because of this, they have an acrid stench of rotting meat. Affording anybody that might be in the area a heads up of their approach. Oh, did I forget to mention that the carrying crawler has no natural enemies other than their own species. There you go. Our look at the life cycle of a carrying crawler. Tell us how you would use them in your adventure setting. Are they a wandering monster? Or are they just sitting there camping out in their lair waiting to spring out on the unsuspected adventurer? And over here to my left, you'll find our review on Castle Caldwell and beyond. It's a basic module. Now until next time, thank you for viewing. Now grab that D8 and roll damage.